Our media is full of different visions of the future. Post-apocalyptic wastelands, sleek space utopias, cyberpunk nightmares. They promise different things waiting for us. Technology might save us from disease or ensure we're victims of our own hubris. It might lead us to strange and wonderful new worlds. Or it might show us our wildest dreams are really nightmares. Futuristic ideas on our screens have even inspired real-world technologies. But the same sci-fi gadget might be viewed differently depending on who is watching. For instance, is a transporter a wonder that opens up our access to the world? Or a terror that destroys, duplicates, and brings the very self into question? So, which is it? How do we think about new technologies? and what's just over the horizon. This is ASU. Has technology improved the human condition? Or actually made it worse? Is technology the cause of challenges like climate change or its solution? Or both? Once a community has decided that a challenge like climate change is real and urgent, the next step of deciding what to actually do is not as straightforward as individual actors might like. For a global problem where we need alignment between many different stakeholders, it is essential to be able to hold onto and discuss fundamental differences in worldview without resorting to personal attacks. Let's look, for instance, at the gridlock that can form in the distance between a techno-optimist's perspective and a techno-pessimist's perspective. You are probably either a techno-optimist or a techno-pessimist and don't even know it. Techno-optimism is the view that technology ultimately leads to progress and improvements in human life through new opportunities and novel solutions to existing problems. Techno-pessimism, on the other hand, sees progress as an illusion and points to suffering caused by disruption from new technology and its unintended consequences. On the topic of climate change, for instance, techno-optimists generally prioritize the development and implementation of technology-based solutions like renewable energy, carbon capture and storage, and improved efficiency. They emphasize the potential for new industries and jobs in the blue-green economy. Techno-pessimists, on the other hand, would point to the technology of the Industrial Revolution and its core dependency on fossil fuels as the very cause of climate change. They might argue for prioritizing societal, political, and behavioral change, such as carbon taxes, cap-and-trade, or degrowth. Techno-pessimists might emphasize the jobs, livelihoods, and the communities that have been destroyed by industrialization and will be destroyed by a business-as-usual transition to a renewable energy system. On a scale from total techno-optimist to complete techno-pessimist, where do you think you fall? And how did you come to that perspective? How confident are you in your view? How fixed is your position on that spectrum? Both techno-optimists and techno-pessimists can point to discrete examples that support their view, either from their personal experience or from the news of their local communities. But there's no definitive method to aggregate and compare the evidence for the positive and the negative impacts of technology. That would involve culturally mediated value judgments and a calculus of intersubjective comparison of benefit and harm that would be impossible to find consensus on. So are we doomed to disagree? Well, let's back up. How did we get into a situation where the camps have to form around such simplified views that flatten all technology into one thing and then into either intrinsically good or bad? In an information ecosystem with so little capacity for nuance, is it possible to avoid black and white thinking when it comes to discussing the impact of technology on human lives? Is it possible to imagine a world in which we, as a globalized, interconnected human community, are able to speak and listen more precisely and inclusively about what we value and what purposes we would like technology to serve? Or maybe that's kind of an optimism of mine worth debating. 
It makes sense that our television shows and movies present one core idea about the future. But what's coming will be more complex than a lesson about scientific hubris or a gleaming vision of what might be. Whether it's Frankenstein or Star Trek, these visions of the future often have more to say about how we feel in the present about technology, progress, and the future than what is actually waiting for us. After all, whatever way you look at it, that's something we still have time to design. This was ASU. Thanks for watching.